Hey guys, welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Um, today we're going to go through Madame Ceres Champion Guide. She's a, a Void Legendary from the Dark Elves faction. Um, let's just crack on with her skills just now, have a look through that first. So we're looking at the A1 is Panic Spread. Now that attacks one enemy and has a 20% chance of placing the Fear debuff uh, for one turn. This increases to 30% if the target's under one debuff and 45 if they're under two. So. She lays a load of debuffs, so this works pretty well. Um, she's going to be laying fears quite a bit in this in the game, so um, super useful A1. Her A2 is really quite good as well. It's an AoE, but it's got a 40% chance of stealing a random buff from each target, which actually goes up to 50% when booked, which is pretty cool. It also uh, has a 3 turn cooldown, which is nuts for this ability, but then to top it all off, it places a block debuffs buff on all allies for two turns if any buff is stolen, which is really, really, really powerful. I mean, super powerful. A lot of people don't notice this happening, actually. Um, and then another thing on top of that, she's got a true fear debuff for one turn, which is the better version of fear on enemies who have buffs stolen. So if you can get that 50% chance to steal a buff, your allies are going to get block buffs, it's, it's nuts honestly. The fact that it places the block debuffs on all allies is a very, very strong ability. So, so I mean, if you're using this straight off the bat and they've, say, got some shields up just from our starting gear or something like that, they, she can steal it, put it onto your champions, put a block debuffs on and put a tree fear on them and also do damage. So, crazy, crazy champion this. And then Midnight Ritual is probably our best ability. This ability is coming out and just straight off removing all buffs from all enemies, then placing a 50% decrease attack debuff and a 60% decrease defense debuff on all enemies for three turns. She is nuts how good she is. Probably, I would say, the best epic in the game, definitely for Arena, um, but just one of the best epics in the game. Um, again, this is a four turn cooldown when booked, so super strong and then she's also got a passive as well it places a shield on this champion equal to 10 percent of their max hp at the start of each turn not round that's turn so she's always getting shield and when she's attacked under a shield buff she's got a 35 percent chance of putting more fear on them so she's getting fear from there fear from this one true fear from this ability and then removing all the buffs and yeah she's you can see she's uh, her kit's insane absolutely insane this is why you'll, you'll find her in top level Platinum Arena like all the time, all the time. Um, the only thing that would really make her better, I suppose, if if she was, she's support, but if she was uh, damage based on defense rather than attack, then she could probably do a bit of uh, damage as well, but she's not here to do damage. She's just here to lay down the debuffs, steal buffs, just play about and be an absolute nuisance really. Um, I'm going to go into our masteries and show you how, how I have her set up. This isn't a be all and end all. Um, so at the moment you've got her going down the support tree always because you really want to have master hexer. Uh, she's placing a lot of debuffs so you want to be able to extend those debuffs so that's very important. Uh, I've stuck her on lower steel. I tend to do that with most of my champions if they're using non four set artifacts. Uh, Evil Eye I like a lot as well. You know I've spoken about that in my other videos. It's, it's a very useful ability, especially in Arena. Um, sniper as well, yeah, just a chance of laying more more uh, fears and things like that. But I've gone straight down to Eagle Eye for 50 accuracy. I'll show you my build, but once I can get my gear, my Great Hall to really negate this, then I could probably go down the defense tree into resistance. But um, at the moment, I need the accuracy. So. Defense, you definitely want to go down here, you want resistance, uh, it's kind of a resistance meta at the moment, so especially in Arena, so that's uh, where we're going with her. Uh, this decreases damage taken, increases shield buffs, just all the way down to the delay deaths are a really good one in defense, and I really like Cycle of Revenge as well, it's giving you more turn meter for everything. So you don't, you don't want to go down the offense route, the only time you ever do that is for clan boss, and Although she's usable definitely in clan boss, it's not her strongest point, so I wouldn't particularly use her in there. So we'll go to the artifacts I've got on her just now, so have a quick look at her stats. Now she's by no means perfect yet, but I've got her in about 2.3k defense and 67k HP, which I'm happy with. That's a lot of HP for her. I could probably, it'd be good to maybe drop a wee bit of that and put on a little bit more defense, but I'm happy with this just now. 
She's currently sitting on 200 speed, which is fine. A bit more speed definitely would be would be a lot better. But again, I'm not um not kind of at the the stage and being able to min max her properly yet with the gear. I'm just using what I have just now. So 200 speed there. Um, I don't need all that crit damage. You could take that off in the crit rate. You don't need any of that stuff. Uh, resistance needs to be a lot higher, but I'm using her in a couple of other builds that gives me more resistance so it's not too bad and our accuracy here is 408 which is pretty good um, I'm not far off being able to take off that accuracy on the masteries already to be honest and maybe get more resistance that way and beef this up but um, 408 accuracy is really really what you need if you're going to be fighting in Platinum Arena with her um, that's what you need to take off all those debuffs so to get all this, I'm running a two-piece speed set and one-piece accuracy, so I get bonuses from my Mastery's Lore of Steel for that. Um, see, the, the rules weren't great. I've got a double accuracy on the weapon, which is pretty good. Attack and crit damage are useless though, so they could have been changed up easy. Again, I've not even leveled this up to level 16 yet, so I've got lots of scope for improvement. Again, not leveled up to 16, but this is a pretty good... Uh, Pretty good helmet for what I need. Speed, HP, accuracy, we all need. Uh, a double accuracy roll on the speed chest, uh, speed shield even with defense, HP. Crit rate's not useful, but the other three are fine. Got an HP gauntlets. These are pretty good, to be honest. They've got speed, double defense, double accuracy, six star, and attack percentage. Um, that's They're really good um, gloves for what we need. And we've got HP on the chest as well. Again, pretty good rolls on this. We've got resistance, defense, and accuracy. So really happy with these two items. And we've got good speed boots with HP, defense, and resistance. So realistically, it's just our kind of top line. We could be do with changing up a little bit. Potentially just the two accuracy. Um, we could actually, yeah. To be honest, we could probably change them out because although I'm getting a fair bit of accuracy from them, I've got one more level to go in my great hall. And if I could get myself a six star accuracy banner and a few more bits and pieces on my uh, accessories, I could easily sub them out for just more speed for a three piece speed set. And then that should set me up for Platinum Arena, doing fairly well on it. Uh, onto the accessories, I'm running an HP ring with defense and HP rolls. A good ring, this one, very good. Um, HP amulet, resistance and crit damage. Didn't want the crit damage. It would have been better if I double rolled accuracy there, so I might need a new one. But really for either of these items, HP or defense is fine. It's the I mean the HP I've gone for mainly because of her skill Witch's Grace, so it gives her a bigger shield at the start of each turn, which makes it quite nice. But a little bit more defense would be nice just to kind of balance out the, the damage taken ratio. And then you always want accuracy banner on her. This is not a bad banner, this one. It's got defense flat, which isn't great. Got a, a roll on attack, which I don't really need, but it's got speed and HP, which we do need. And it's five stars, so it's not too bad. But there's lots of room to improve this, but you can see really what you're looking for is HP, defense, speed, and accuracy and resistance. Basically completely negating attack, crit rate, crit damage. Just forget about them completely, because there's already quite a few stats that you need to make this one work and the thing is between defense and HP it doesn't necessarily matter which way you go heavier I would say slightly heavier HP just so you get a good uh, balance of which is grace on the on the uh, shields but it's up to you you can you can definitely put more defense and make her tank here as well so we'll go into the review section here she gets extremely good reviews um, I'm just gonna have a quick look in the yeah so everyone's saying to put her in speed and life so yeah you, you do want to put her more more HP than uh, defense generally, but you could easily make this a three piece speed set or speed defense, speed life, something along those lines. <clears throat> arena offense, she is 100% five, one of the best arena champions in the game and definitely the best arena epic in the game. Probably maybe Mausoleum Mage could give her a run for her money, but they're both pretty damn good. Um, arena defense, I don't know why she's lore for this she's amazing at that as well magic keep she's obviously great um she removes buffs so she's actually fantastic in the magic keep minotaur's labyrinth she breezes through that most champions do uh campaign location she's not a campaign farmer at all she's okay she'll get you through content and stuff but it's not where she shines but she can definitely be used so i'll put her as a four 
the Dragon's Lair, she's very good. Um, she puts down debuffs, she steals buffs, she controls the waves pretty easy, so I'd put her at a 5. Clan Boss, I'm going to have her at a 4 for the Clan Boss. Um, she can put down, the obviously, the attack down and defense down and stuff like that, but she doesn't do much else, so just going to have her a 4, but she's definitely usable. Um, Spirit Keep, she's fantastic at again. Force Keep, yeah, she's always going to do well. Again, the Void Keep, these things are fairly easy, so she's going to be cracking on with that stuff. Ice Golems, she is pretty good on Ice Golems. I wouldn't give her much more than a 4, though. I don't tend to use her much for that. Um, the Spiders, then, are probably, yeah, another place I wouldn't particularly use her. She does have a decrease in turn meter on her A1 and the decreased defense and attack, but there's definitely better champions, so I'd probably be a low 4, maybe like 3.9 or something like that for her. Uh, Fire Knights again, not that much use in Fire Knights. She's uh, probably a, a three for Fire Knights. It's her worst um, worst ability. And then Faction War, she's a solid five. One of the best um, one of the best Dark Elves to get actually at, for uh, Faction War. So um, doo -doo -doo. let's have a quick look in Arena just now. So if we look at the top players right now, <coughs> it's not going to take as long probably to find a Ceres. So we've got at number eight spot. You see, we've got Madame Ceres top 8 platinum arena right now you usually find a couple of these in the sort of top 15 so there's another one there's another one um so you can see like out of all the epics she's pretty much the only one you'll see at this top top level of platinum arena you can see her popping up quite a lot here um very very good you'll see obviously this guy's rolling the double skull, skull crown but um yeah you see mausoleum mage from time to time i quite like him but yeah, it's, yeah, as you can see here, she's extremely well used in the top 100 in the world in Arena. So she's like top, top tier champion here, top tier. And if you've got her, fantastic. She's not the easiest to get as she's a Void champion, but she's epic, so much easier than um, much easier than the other ones. Um, the only other thing, I suppose, was her books I forgot to go through. So she's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, 9, 10. She's only 10 books, so she's not really that hard to book up. And if you get lucky, you don't need these damage increases here. So if you can just get down to the cooldown on this, and then the double cooldown on Midnight Ritual, this is the one you really need. Uh, this on a 4 turn cooldown is good. Especially the fact that it lasts 3 turns. Um, and if you're playing it alongside the Hexer, you can generally get it up to 4. You know, that happens a lot for me. So a lot of the time this will place these both on for four turns and then it's just up again. Um, trick or treats on a three turn cooldown is crazy as well. So yeah, not really that hard to book and yeah, much easier obviously without the legendary books. So that's Madame Ceres. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's gonna be more content coming as I'm still on lockdown for the coronavirus. So hope you guys are all enjoying your isolation time, playing a bit of raid, chilling out and um, yeah, it's not really that fun to be honest, it's a pretty shitty time, but hey ho, what can we do? So anyway guys, take it easy, hope you enjoyed the video, and please like and subscribe to the channel please, it uh, really helps me out. We're definitely gaining a lot more subscribers recently, and there's loads of people following on Twitch, so make sure you follow on Twitch as well. I am Steeman, we're on most nights at the moment, so make sure you hit that like and hit the follow button guys, and I will catch you guys later. Take it easy.